Happy Monday, Sonder family. We're here. We're officially at the halfway mark of September, and I'm so glad to welcome you to this week's weekly setup. My name is Jennifer Ogilvy. I'll be your facilitator this morning. I think I mentioned I have every Monday morning this month. So I'm doing my best to bring you some new things so that you don't get tired of me. Joining me this morning, my co-facilitator is the fabulous Malika coming to us from California. So it is early. She's with you early birds um, this morning. She'll be hanging out in the chat if you need anything along the way. Speaking of that chat, make sure it's set to everyone. I'm seeing a ton of our um, regular uh, Monday morning folks, the names that are usually here on Monday morning. So welcome to you. And um, I, I want to ask, you know, is there anybody here for the very first time setting up their week in a social with the Sonder community? Please drop a me in the chat so that we are able to give you a big old welcome. Oh, Jamie's here for the first time. Awesome. We're so glad to have you and anybody else um, who's out there. Michelle is here for the first time. Y'all are going to find um, that this is like that, uh, that accountability date. It's like having somebody waiting at the front door for you to go walking. Like I'm so much better about making sure this journal is set up when I am with you, right? And so, um, you know, you you come, you hang out, you see those familiar faces, um, and, and we just have this date with ourselves, with this awesome, awesome community. Um, so yeah, yeah, just get, stare at the screen while you wake up. I wonder, I debated on opening our time together with September by Earth, Wind, and Fire or September by Taylor Swift because the Taylor Swift version is a little more mellow. And I thought, no, we're going to wake up with Earth, Wind, and Fire um, this morning. So yes, yeah, so let's see. We make sure we set our chat to everyone. Um if you, you know, this is cameras off, mics off, this event is being recorded, you'll be able to access it probably later today if there's something that you see that you missed. But I'm also going to suggest, you know, um, I know lots of us just take a literal screenshot, a photograph of things that speak to us on the screen. Um, many of you I know said, have told me you have like a silk and folder in your phone and you just put all the ideas there so you can go and access them there um, easily. <laughs> or you can have those print screen keys ready on your keyboard. I always have to look it up. I never, I never remember. I converted to um, MacBook after I started facilitating and I always have to look up what keys do I hit to do screenshot because um, I forget. So I did include a graphic on our opening slide this morning, things to notice this week. And it's five days of just slowing down and noticing. Day one is what energizes you, what drains you. Day two is notice how certain people make you feel. Um, that can go beautifully with that habit tracker of yours. Or I mean, I'm sorry, the mood tracker of day three. Notice the way you talk to yourself. This is sep September is self care awareness month, and I think the way we talk to ourselves is probably the number one way we take care of ourselves. Um, day four, notice what you need help with and be willing to ask for help. And day five, notice what you are grateful for. So just a little thing maybe to consider to plug into your journal somewhere this week. This is actually a graphic from our Instagram page. So gonna, you know, shout out to that. If you're not following Silk and Sonder, that is a great positive juju place, right? It's worth your follow. So, um, you know, consider consider doing that for those little bumps in the in the middle of the day, those happy, you know, little um, endorphin drops. Um, here are those community guidelines. As I mentioned earlier, this is a beautiful community. You will not find a more supportive group of folks than the Sonder Club. We say come as you are. You can come if you're having a bad day and you're invited to let us know today's a bad day. Um, you're also invited to let us celebrate with you the things that are going well. So we just say come as you are. Again, mics off, cameras off. You take what you need while you're here, but we do create a safe space 
Um, that's why we like to remind you of our community guidelines. Malika is here to make sure the chat's A-OK. -okay. And we ultimately want to make sure that we remind you to always take care of yourself. If you're not in the headspace to work on a prompt, especially sometimes when we do, the, do those deep digs um, with the journal prompts, you know, give yourself that space, that permission. I'm not, I'm not there right now. That's okay. It's important to take care of yourself. Our agenda this morning, we're going to work on that knowledge mind map, um, our rosebud thorn reflection. I have something else following rosebud thorn that we don't usually do together that we're going to work on, and then we'll do those weekly setup pages. So, of course, we've been digging into knowledge for a couple of weeks now, looking at different lenses, how knowledge affects our lives, how we embrace knowledge, where we see knowledge in other people, and we take that on lots, lots of deep digging. I, again, I always say I love the themes because it sort of really helps us get to know ourselves better. Um, there's the definition from from our definition page uh, for knowledge, and I'm going to shout out to um, one of our co-facilitators, Bailey. You know, she she said one of the real important parts about our definition this month is that word and it's facts information and skills acquired by a person um not facts information or skills so it's this idea of everything that life has brought us allows us to embrace the knowledge that is in our life oh and leanne just shared it's it's encouraged her to learn sign language yes that is <laughs> that is so great. And yes, Pat, great call out because we did do curiosity like two months ago. And it was really interesting to, to see how that kind of set us up for embracing this idea of knowledge in our life. I, I love that. So if you are new here, we do what's called a mind map at our weekly setups. And it's a deeper dig into that theme, a bonus prompt for you to work on if you'd like. Um, no pressure. It's kind of take what you need from these socials. But these are deeper digs into that theme. These will be can be done anywhere in your journal. You won't find the mind maps in your journal. Again, it's a bonus prompt for coming up, showing up to the weekly setups. Now, I did put a whole list of um, tips of pages you can consider for this. And if you haven't been with us, you can grab a screenshot of all four questions or all three, we're on week three. So the three questions we've had and like dig into this week. And then maybe you'll take time to consider how week one's mind map question works, week two, how that works for you. And, um, you know, we, we just kind of carry on and oh, Karen just sent me a little message that said, she's like, I am feeling much better. I am. This is, I think 17, day 17, still coughing a little bit, but, but this COVID has not been fun, but I am, I am more like Jennifer. I'm so glad. Thank you for asking. Um, Anyway, so any of these spaces in your journal. So week one was declarative knowledge. And that was just like these facts that we've learned. Um, focus on that. And then last week we looked at procedural knowledge and we realized that there are just all these procedures in our life. I mean, it can be even when you consider what it takes to tie your shoe, where did that start? And, and all the steps through the years, you know, the things we do, we kind of, it's almost like the things we don't think about because it's just this procedure, driving a car. Like there was a time when you didn't have that skill. So we really leaned into procedural. And this week's, uh, I was going to say clue, this week's mind map is contextual knowledge. And so that's, we're going to ask you to think of a time when you had to apply knowledge you already had in a specific context or situation and how did you determine the appropriate action to take reflect on how understanding the context like all the information what you were bringing to the situation how it changed your approach and then consider how it might guide you in similar situations in the future. And I've got some ideas for you to sort of I know Monday mornings were ugh, <laughs> give me the ideas our brains aren't awake yet. So when you look at contextual, it's it's like taking that declarative and procedural knowledge, 
and, and then knowing how and where to apply it. So it involves understanding the context in which your certain information or skills are relevant. So knowing how to maybe do a math problem um, because you've got those formulas memorized and you understand how you get to that. Or a cult, cult, this one's huge for me, the cultural context behind a historical event. Like it's important to know the roots of like things that are happening now and backtracking and understanding, you know, maybe how we got here. Um, so it's about knowing when and where. Now, I have a lot for you guys to consider. So um, there, you know, we don't have to do this huge, deep, deep dig. Um, there are just things that are in your world where you apply contextual knowledge. And I came up with the things like that are down there at the bottom. Like it's thinking about how do you adapt? How do you know how to prioritize or figure out next steps, um, making modifications, uh, being in the right frame of mind for certain situations, uh, adjusting, take, make, making plans, planning, considerations. And then I gave you a bunch of stuff. And one of the things that really jumped out for me when I was thinking about my life and what I've written, um, and, and there's my mind map. It's just, you know, four, four little boxes. We're here on week three. Um, I said, my thing was, I, I am a former educator. I taught kindergarten and then, <laughs> pardon me, I made a jump to administration and all of a sudden, all the problems of the school were my personal problems. And I had the angry parents in my office filled, filled with passion because right, we're, we're mama birds, papa birds. And, and so I got all, all the complaints, whether they were legit or not. And, um, I had to really, you can't get out of the chat, Jamie. Um, sometimes you have to, you might have to go and look at view. If you can see view, um, if you're on your phone, sometimes it does tricky things too. Malika might be able to offer you a couple of lines there. Um, let me go back to, so, so I had to take like what I knew about working with children and then figure out how that applied to angry people. I'm not, I don't like confrontation. I don't know. I mean, who does? Well, some people do. I don't, I don't want to argue. I don't want to get all that. So I started thinking about what I wrote was, um, you know, I had to learn how to engage with neutral responses. So I had to learn how to be calm. I took that calmness that I had for kids apply that to parents and figure out ways to not necessarily get them on my side, but get them on my side. Let's get on the same page. We're not, we are a team for this child. This is not about us, me against you. This is about how can we partner to benefit this child. And so one of my key phrases that really helped me is taking the idea of, of expressing to people, I'm sure you understand. So, because a lot of times my conflicts were from rules that benefited an entire school of 200 children, um, that those rules existed for their well being and safety. And it might have been inconvenient for a parent, but pulling them along, figuring out that communication, um, diffusing the situation. And, and then also when you, when I was an administrator, I got all the kids and we got them when they were little and there might've been some learning differences <laughs> that I knew this kid is going to need more than what we can offer. And so again, that communication of, you know, I'm not a diagnostician. However, here are things I see and I want to partner with you. And so that communicating with others that's on this long list, that was a biggie where I took the the tools I had with littles and applied them to the bigs um, that I work with. Yes, the leadership skills apply in all different, and, and now I use them with, you know, I can encourage parents who are having a rough time in Walmart, right? Um, so, so that's where I came. But think about all the things, like when you travel or you plan for a vacation, there's this set of, of rule, rules that are there, this context that you embrace in knowing how to prepare for traveling 
or how to respond to emails, right? Like there's the, hey, how you doing? But there's also like, we have an issue and you use certain sets of language. Um, you know, you're, you have certain things from, from language that you use to get your point across. Um, think about cooking and how maybe you doctor up recipes to be your own because you have all this context of cooking or, um, you know, maybe you're like this savvy shopper and you know how to get the best deals or you dress for certain and specific occasions and what helps guide you with those decisions. So again, this isn't an exhaustive list, but I thought it would get our our brain go in this morning, and I'm going to just put on some music while you consider contextual knowledge. And I'll go back to that first slide that has all four questions on it as well. So you can grab a screenshot if you need to, to work on all of those. But um, just kind of think about that flexibility that you have um, with the knowledge that you have and how that supports you in the decisions you make.
So lots of stuff is coming up in the chat. Thank you for sharing. Um, I love the comment about like, I never realized how much bartending would prepare me for toddlerhood. And and, and then Malika commented, yeah, because drunk grownups are, are toddlers, essentially. Um, so I love the idea of thinking about what we have, the knowledge we have under our belts um, that applies to, to every, everyday life. I love just taking that moment to do that reflection. So, um, you know, you may work on this a little bit more or you, you know, let, let it think, think about it throughout the week. Um, now I'm going to ask you to turn to page 44 <laughs> and it is our rosebud thorn reflection. We do this as a staple every week. It is like reflecting on what went well last week, what are you grateful for? What are your buds? What's coming down the pipe? What are you looking forward to? And then those thorns, what did it go well? What is challenging or causing you a lot of stress right now? And I, I've laughed. My bud is going to be wedding planning for the next few weeks um, as my daughter is getting married. So you're probably going to see that one over and over again. Um, the roses, we had a big wedding shower this weekend. I got to go back home to the Houston, Texas area. Got to see some friends and we got to just bless my daughter and and her fella. And that was fun. And then my thorn is um, someone in my extended family is struggling with addiction. We thought things were going better. They're not. And it may cause the downfall of a family that I love very, very much. And it's just weighing heavy on on my heart. And so um, thanks for giving me the space to say that out loud and to write that in paper and give that power. Um, I'm going to put on some music while you do your reflection. Feel free to share as you are comfortable in the chat. Thank you for those encouraging words, friends. Um, and oh, Christine, good, good. Yeah, day 46. Love that. Love that. Um, yeah, I just, I, I said, I'm one of the questions on, on this graphic is additionally, what can you do to turn this thorn into a bud? And for me, I am, I have it on my to-dos this week. I'm going to find an Al-Anon group so I can make sure I'm taking care of my heart and soul and figuring out the best way to just, love and support and, and not, not get, you know, go down the bad, the, the hard path. So um, anyhow, always think about what, what can we learn from those thorns? Um, it's, it, that's an important part of life. Um, now we're going to do something we don't normally do, but I would like you to flip back a couple of pages to page 39. 
You may have already done your currently page, but we are mid-month. It usually shows up around mid-month in your actual journal, this currently page. And I'm going to encourage you, we're going to take just a few moments. I want you to go flip back to your habit tracker, the big monthly habit tracker, the intentions that you wanted to set for the month, the ones you wrote down. Look at that stop, start, and continue box. I want you just to take a moment to look over that. Check in. Is there anything that needs tweaking? Is there a habit that you haven't done? And you know the reason why, and maybe the habit needs to be tweaked a little bit to allow yourself um, a little, little more success with that. Um, I was looking at my tracker, and one of the ones that um, has, has been kind of blank is I wanted to do, I paired, I usually do a three good things reflection, but I was wanting to lean into more, um, you know, a scripture a day kind of thing with a little reflection. And I was getting my three good things, but I didn't get the scripture stuff. And it's because I had COVID and I didn't feel good. And, um, and so those are blank. So um, I may go ahead and separate those two. Um, because pairing them just isn't working right now for me. So give yourself that permission to stop mid-month and, and evaluate where you are and, and give yourself that permission to, to change things up a moment. So um, I'm going to put on just a quick little bit of music while you maybe consider all these things that you're loving, feeling, enjoying, anticipating, but also take a look at those things that you set for yourself for the first half of September check in, and then figure out how to move on if you need to make any changes. And I'll be back to check in with you in just a moment.
Thank you for just taking that moment of reflection for what you wanted for yourself. And, and it is okay on that habit tracker to just start mid-month with something new on a line if something isn't happening or or you're doing it, but it's not really meaningful. As you if you as you've been working through it, you're like, no, no, it's not really meaningful. And you want something else that's got a little more meat to it. Feel free to share that or to change that because um, this is about you and your journey. It's not about being right on your page and having all the boxes filled up. It's about um, continual knowledge of self and and that growth. So um, I'm glad you a, f a few of you commented that you you enjoyed doing that reflection. So I'll try to if I have those middle of the month assignments, I'll try to remember to to drop this in so that we can do that self check in. Um, all righty. So let's look at our weekly setup. Before we go, I wanted to show you just a couple of spaces in our journal that you may or may not be embracing, but I love what these folks did. Um, this person on the left, you can see has highlighted, um, the dates of the socials that they are planning to attend that sync up with what is in the index. Um, I thought that was a great use of that that page, just that visual, that writing it down and that that committal piece of putting pen to paper. So, um, you know, don't know if you use your index in, in a way more than an index, but I thought that was a really good idea to put those little reminders there. And then, of course, we've always got that teeny little calendar up at the top of our page. And this person has kind of got some coding there to know that like, oh, this is a day there's some activity. The the square boxes equal an appointment. And it's just, again, that, that extra step of the, you know, visualization and that process of pen to paper that makes things stick in our brain because there's just something about that that whole process. So just wanted to show um, so those ideas in case that was something that might speak to you. Um, we are going to be starting on page 46 for our weekly setup. Here are a couple of great examples from Sonder Community. Um, so loved the these two pages. One is completed. You can see the one on the right. Like you look down at that habit and activity um, tracker. There, there were no goals set for that. It was just a straight tracking of when these things happened. Did total it up at the end. Um, the goals for the person on the right, as well as the, the to-dos, are in alignment with one another. So there's household is the first goal. And then you look at the to-dos and there are three things that they're going to do for that goal. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, and, and it goes on through their personal and business. The one on the left, oh my goodness. Um, look at that note in the to-do box, that um, a little note of that positive self-talk. What a great way to embrace self-care September than to write yourself just this little love note. Love that. Um, you can see that their goals are tied into work, tied into home, and tied into joyfulness. And so when you go down to the habit and activity tracker, that is coded with either a W for work, an H for home, or a J for joyfulness. So just kind of love that whole mindset of the intentionality that is on those two pages. We're going to start by thinking about how we want to feel this week. That sets our, our course. It's kind of like taking that first step into the week. Um, my word this week is rejuvenated. And then I added a little quote, you know, or a little, little statement back on track because I have been putting so much off, um, with just being a little under the weather and still trying to do all the things. There's a little cloud bubble or a word cloud. If you are looking for word and if you're sitting there and you're not quite sure, like I'm feeling this way, drop that in the chat and maybe, um, one of your Sonder community friends can say, oh, that word should be blah, blah, blah. And they'll help you come up with that word. 
Um, Sanji says at ease this week. Taylor is looking to be content. Kai says um, curiously aware, happy and chill. I want to be happy and chill and chilly. I'm ready for some cool weather. Um, light on my feet, energetic, organized, unstoppable. I think there's a couple of songs that go with that. Accomplished constantly in God's present festive. Yes. It's time to bring out the oranges cozy and rested. Maybe some of these are speaking to you motivated. Definitely. I love these words. So uh, maybe one of these words has jumped out at you. Now let's take a look very quickly at our goals and to do's. I've, again, I've got some fabulous examples from our community and I will Put on some music while you work on these pages. And when I do that, I'll go back through the slides. So if you see something that speaks to you, grab that screenshot. We can use this space for those three major goals or one major goal or no major goals. And you repurpose this space. Perhaps you're going to put some routines down here. As you see in this example over on the right, your goals can be set by what you just looked at that intentions page. Is there something that needs to be a goal this week? Um, or maybe knowledge and really starting to dig into those things. You know, are, are you interested in learning something new? What does that look like? Do you start a process with that? And that becomes one of your activities for the week. You can also, again, repurpose this in a, in a ton of ways. There's a whole list of, of things that you can do. Again, it's about taking what you need this week we love the idea of no goals, saying no, taking away, eliminating things that don't serve you. This page on the left is, is a new example. Um, hands off, eyes off, mind off. And, you know, just some reminders about staying focused, staying in your lane, doing what serves you. Love that idea. Um, and then just a list of goals, you know, of don't goals, don't do the screen time, don't drink a ton of caffeine. And it, and there's actually four points there for that page. Um, also, the personal challenge for the week. Um, I the, the one over on the right cracked me up. I just found this one more jaw, more joy, less blah. Um, and then some great ways to seek joy to reduce the blah makers, like what is holding me back again, kind of tied into that. No, what am I saying? No to, and then, and then some foundations, what, what is going to just serve me well, which is so important to consider as we look at our self care, um, different categories. I know y'all love a category because you just hone in on those three things and plug something into that. So some great examples here of, of great categories um, of how to divide your goals up. Some more examples there. Um, you don't have, you know, I love the kind of those circles. It's just kind of a fun way to frame that out. You can see the motivated on the right has four goals. And then you can take those goals and directly create your to-dos. You don't have to. Your to-do list can be a standalone to-do list. But here's some great examples of how folks took those goals and directly tied the to-dos in so that those goals get met. Um, again, more examples of that. Loved this. Look at the example on the left. So the feeling was, I want to embrace feeling value. And then the goals are the things this person wants to embrace. Embrace positive thinking. Embrace positive self-image and embrace well-being. And then they put things in the to-do list that will help them meet each one of those goals. We like the need, want, hope to do, you know, again, the category. So there's some examples of that. It helps give you understanding of what, what are the priorities, the Eisenhower long to-do list, plug those things into this list. That delete box, sometimes it's hard to delete things, especially if you're a single person household. So maybe the delete box can change to something to be dropped for now or declined, delayed for later. Um, but 
Plugging your things into the Eisenhower matrix is a very good way of prioritizing. I know many of you use this for certain areas in your life, maybe your volunteerism or your, your occupation, your, all the list goes there so that you can do the important and urgent things, right? I tend to want to do the not important, not urgent things first. And that's not always what needs to happen. Um, again, that what are we taking away, creating a not to do list or some great ideas for that. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and drop down, show you examples of that habit and activity tracker, because some of those to do's and goals may be reflected down here. And then I'll put on some music and we'll work on this page. So here's some great examples of this. You don't have to track every day. The example on the left, you can see I'm not tracking on Labor Day. Um, there is um, a fun day of a Selena tribute. If you got to do that, that's pretty fun. So just not worrying about the habits and activities that day, leaning into this experience. And Sunday is Sunday fun day. Not going to do the goals. So you don't have to do them every single day. <laughs> Again, you don't have to set numbers. You can. The one below the, the one on the top there, you can see they are tracking three things and it's kind of a morning focus, afternoon focus, evening focus, right? Not tracking goals, just going to track the occurrences. Um, I The one over on the upper right is one of mine from, um, you know, uh, I gamified it. I did the something five times, something four times, something three times, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I put that week, watch a documentary. That's always one of my intentions in my, I change in one of my intention spaces to learnings. And um, I always watch a documentary. And so that was the week I was going to make sure that that happened. The one at the bottom, I love it. I'm just not doing it this week. My priority is packing probably somebody who was moving and that's what the habits and activities needed to be. Here's some ideas for some self-care. If you're super busy, great little things to plug into that habit and activity tracker. And then some inspiration. If you're like, I I'm not sure what I want to put here. Again, if you only need to track two things this week because it's a busy week, just track two things. I'm going to stop talking and I will put on some music while you work on this page.
So hopefully you have an idea of what you want that kind of page one to look like, the page, the first part of our setup. Let's go ahead and take a look at the examples for the next page, which is page 47 this week. This page is going to include the meal plan, the mind body health plan, um, that shopping list, and the I am loving box. Um, what I love about this particular page is that these spaces, I think, all kind of get changed up, um, repurposed uh, the most, right? Like we kind of use, I tend to use page one as it is intended, but page two is where I do my repurposing. Now, you're always invited to use the pages and the sections just as they are. You don't have to make any changes, but if you find, like I keep my shopping list on my phone, on Google Keep. My husband is linked to it. So whichever one of us is out and about, we can see the shopping list, pick up what is needed. So I always repurpose my shopping list and it's usually turning it into some kind of a little fun bingo board with whatever focus I'm looking at. Sometimes it's all the household chores. Sometimes it's treating myself, taking care of me. It just kind of depends on what the week's bringing. But this page does get repurposed all the examples I'm showing you. So I'm going to show you some repurpose ideas for the meal plan, but you may want to take one of those and pop it into that shopping list or pop it into the mind, body, health care plan, or maybe your meal plan for the week. You're just going to focus on your main meal and that's going to go in the shopping space so that you can repurpose that nice space for um, the meal plan. Now, I wanted to post up this page because as you can see, we talked about the page that was set up with the focus of work, home, and joy, the WHJ. And this is being brought over to how things were prioritized in each one of those goal areas for the week. So really leaning into embracing those goals that were set, right? So those three goals had to do with the work, home, and joy. And I'm taking this all the way through to my habits and activities, to my to-dos. And I'm I'm looking at a reflection of how I prioritize those things. So um, lots of intentionality with that page. Um, and sometimes I'm in the headspace for doing that, like just some, some deep focusing. Other times I just fill in the spots as willy-nilly as I want and what I want to take for the week. So again, it's about taking what you need, um, but wanted to be sure that you saw that. And let's look at some meal plan examples. These, This is three different ways to kind of use this space for you, your nutrition. You may be tracking macros, um, and so you want to see it in writing. I track like my protein, but I put it in my monthly habit tracker. And instead of checking off, I just, I put the, what, how much protein I had that day. Um, knowing, you know, my goal is a hundred and, and I'm tracking and like, I'm doing terrible this month. And I think it just has to do with COVID. We didn't shop. I ate what I wanted to eat. Cause I didn't feel good. I felt like I deserved that. <laughs> But, then I look, but the proof is in the pudding when I look at, at my protein is not, not good, but I'm tracking it, but I'm reminding myself of grace also. Um, so folks have set this up for their, for their meals for the week. And then a ton of repurposing ideas. Again, not all exhaustive, but you can get some great ideas um, for repurposing, not just this space, but any of the spaces that I'm going to share with you. I'll put on the music and go back and forth between these while you work on these sections. But you can see here's a reflection, what I loved about myself today. Oh, talk about some good self-care. Um, and then this week, I, I I read, I learned, I reached out to, I come, I love that. Just a little, little moment every day. Your exercise tracker. Um, again, another example of that one thing a day. Um, shouting out to that self-care awareness month because real self-care is a series of tough decisions, right? It's, it's health insurance. It's making the doctor's appointments. It's balancing the checkbook. It's doing some of those tasks that are not fun, but that really do serve you well. So just that reminder, but it, it can also be the treats just, 
I've been sharing this graphic for the month. I'll keep it in here, this rotation. If you are wanting to add some things each day for your self-care, whether they're treats or or the the real stuff, um, you know, the I always say the grown-up stuff, feel free to grab a screenshot and pull from this list. And you'll see this again. I'm going to leave it in all month long because it is self-care self-care month. So, but I love these compilations where it's all in one space. Um, here are some new examples of some mind, body health, how folks have filled this space out from a cleaning list. Um, the one that's in the bottom middle, that was like my wardrobe closet thing. I just like dug in, what do I have? What do I need? What do I need to get rid of? Um, what do I want to try to sell? What needs attention? Like polish my boots, um, so just that was about my closet that week. Recently, I've been leaning into eating the rainbow. You guys know that I'm trying to eat a lot of different, different things. Um, the, how do, what do I, how do I feel? What do I need reflection? That top middle, good for morning, good for evening, good. Just check-ins with yourself. Again, some more ways to set this up. And then I have some graphics that you can pull from to make it fun. Like with the alliteration, here's all the national days of, this week, today is National Guacamole Day. I told um, Malika that to me also means National Margarita Day because we'll have margarita when I have guacamole. Um, but that could just be a fun way to lean into your week. Here's some more self-care ideas to try. This is from some old content on our Silk and Sonder Instagram page. I'll go back and forth between these. Again, some more Instagram. Here's our shopping list. I talked about repurposing that. If you're not using it for a shopping list, you can see lots of folks like bingos. So there's that. Maybe there's routines and rhythms that you do a daily check off or a packing list if you're traveling, um, weekly spending, using it as a space for inspirational sticker. And I'm encouraging you this month to do, I am loving blank about myself. What do you need to hear? How are you loving yourself and taking care of yourself for September Self-Care Awareness Month? So um, I'm going to put on some music and I'll go back through these slides and then we will wrap it up. the fastest hour that we will experience this whole entire week. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. 
I hope you were able to grab some screenshots or try something new in your journal to keep it fresh and let this tool work in your life. Um, again, this was recorded, so if you needed to go back to catch something you missed, feel free to do so. Remember to really embrace what you are loving about yourself. You guys are amazing, Sonder family. We'd love to see your setup in Sonder Club, including if you made any changes to that self, that um, habit tracker or that intentions page as you are reflecting of what you want to finish strongly with in September. Um, just a shout out to our personal coaching. If you haven't checked that out, you might want to see what that is all about. I get mine every day. It's been very encouraging. Um, there are the QR codes. If you have suggestions for, um, you know, what you'd like to see in our Sonder socials, be sure to put that in your survey or send um, an email to hello at Silk and Sonder. That's headquarters. Or that's the customer care address and let them know what you would like to see um, for your Sonder ex social experience. Um, it's going to be a great week. There's our playlist. My knowledge list is super long. I am on Spotify, so I will share that list with you. I do apologize. Um, it is, it is, super long. I keep finding knowledge songs. Um, but <laughs> I love, I love my, my playlist. Um, I want to thank you for joining us. Y'all are going to rock it this week. It's going to be a good one. We're, we're midway through September. You're doing, doing it. Good job, Sondra. Family. See you next week. Stole the 